What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Collector channel. So it's been a couple of weeks since we did a video on this channel, and I figured what better way to welcome everything back than by knocking out a haul video. I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about in this video. I've got something like 48 volumes of manga. And if you're new to this channel, the way that I essentially structure these haul videos is that I do my single uh, volumes first. And then I do my Omni uh, paperbacks. And then after that, I do my... Uh, Spanish manga, and I do have Spanish manga in this volume. If I had Spanish or like Japanese manga, I would do that. And then I do my uh, like small hardcovers, and then I usually close out with my like uh, Omni hardcovers. Or if I have comics, I usually do comics at the end of the video. But I don't have any comics this haul, and I haven't had any comics for a while. But I do occasionally pick up comics, and when I do, I usually I'll talk about those at the at the end of the video so yeah let's jump right in so right off the bat we've got die dark volume 7 i absolutely love die dark my last video that i dropped on the channel was a let's review for volume 6 this is absolutely one of the most bananas <laughs> stories that i've ever personally read i love it so much uh, i'm excited to start this volume i haven't read volume 7 yet but given the shenanigans of the last volume I'm really excited to see where the hell we're going to go with this one. Q Hayashi, that to me, is one of those creators that just never ceases to amaze. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because it would be kind of getting into spoilers, but I mean, I could give you kind of like an idea of what Die Dark is about for maybe anybody that hasn't read it that has an interest in it. Uh, Die Dark pretty much follows this kid named Zaha Sanko, whose bones are said to be able to grant any wish one desires, but to get his bones, you obviously have to kill him. And a lot of mercenaries, a lot of people over the years have tried to kill this kid. And he ends up being the one that kills them. And in the universe of Die Dark, bones are a sense, essentially a currency. Like, you can use bones to buy things from this uh, shady character named Misatani, who has a shop with, like, all sorts of crazy uh, uh, things that you can use. And it's a really... Fleshed, it's a really well fleshed out world, and one of my favorite stories that I'm uh, currently reading. And like I said, this volume literally just dropped, I think, like three or four days ago. And I dropped my volume six review like two or three, like, uh, like a few days before that, just for the sake of uh, uh having something to, to help people that haven't read volume six in a while, you know, like just like a refresher, you know, before going into volume seven and eventually I'll probably, uh, knock out a let's review as well for die dark volume seven. Hopefully I will, hopefully I don't, it doesn't take me until like volume eight is going to drop before I, before I record it. But hopefully, yeah, hopefully sooner or later, yeah, I'll, I'll knock out a let's review. Oh, and by the way, this is by seven C's. Also by seven C's, we've got mysterious disappearances, Volume 2. This is one of those series that I absolutely love. Uh, I talked about Volume 1 in a video. I think it was a currently reading video, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, I think it was like my um, summer, my late summer currently reading video. I talked about Mysterious Disappearances. Uh, I love this series pretty much. Uh, this woman right here is a grown-up who can transform into like a teenager or into a child and there's like a whole lot of stuff going on and i talked quite a bit about it in my um summer current in my yeah my summer currently reading video but pretty much this girl right here and her brother come from like this other world and they can see these signs that warn you or warn them rather of like sorts of impending uh, dangers or whatever like in certain places certain places are like haunted and they are able to sense it and she kind of joins them in their adventures doing kind of like detective work i guess if you will and it's a really fun story if you just want something that isn't like save the world it's more like intimate i guess if you will like intimate stories that as it's going like as it gets going you know like in volume two we start to learn we start to learn a little bit more about this other world and i think in the vault in the third volume we're supposed to learn even more still about the world from which this character and her brother uh emerged and 
yeah, pretty much. I don't want to give too much of it away. Like if you want to learn a lot more of it, you could tell, you could check out the video that I did or, or even just like, you know, read it for yourself or listen to anime as well. So you could even, you know, watch the anime. I haven't seen it yet, but I do plan on watching it because I love this, this manga so much that it's, it feels like one of those things that's really like, it feels like one of those things that like it's worth, you know, uh, going out of my way and trying to uh, check out the check out the anime. All right. So up next, we've got Chainsaw Man Volume 15. And this is by Viz Shonen Jump. I'm a massive fan of Tatsuki Fujimoto. Uh, if you are like if you are like me and you keep up with the uh, with the chapter drops each week, sometimes, yeah, like sometimes sometimes bi-weekly usually it's been kind of like weekly for like a little bit now the story is getting absolutely bananas <laughs> i mean it's always been just like one of the most insane things that i've ever read but lately it's just gotten it's been hitting those points you know where it's just getting it's starting to feel like old chainsaw man again like towards the end of it and i don't want to say anything that's going to end up spoiling you know for anybody that is possibly you know like a manga or if it's a physical you know release reader only like you're not reading it on the shonen jump app or you're not reading it on the on the manga plus app you know i don't want to say too much about it i won't even go into like what's going on here in this in this specific volume but yeah i mean i don't know for the most part i feel like you kind of already know what Chainsaw Man is. I don't think I need to explain what Chainsaw Man is to anyone at this point. It's already got an anime. It's got a movie that's coming out about one of my favorite characters from the manga. And I'm super excited about it. I know a lot of people in the fandom are also super excited about it because of that character. And yeah, where this is going on right now was kind of like where it's starting to like ramp up again because it was like really slow for a while and this is this this arc right here this part of the arc i guess is where like it starts to you know get back on track again and from there it just kind of like explodes in and just the wackiness you know things that that end up uh happening but yeah i'm just gonna keep collecting it you know i don't really read it because i already read it so I just kind of collect them for the sake of supporting because I love Tatsuki Fujimoto and I pretty much have everything of his that is available in English from Fire Punch to all these Chainsaw Man things and then to all these Chainsaw Man volumes and then, uh, you know, the one shots and whatnot that he did like Goodbye Airy and uh, uh, Look Back, which now has an animated film. But yeah, man, if Tatsuki Fujimoto has got his hands on it, I will 100 <laughs> If Tatsuki Fujimoto has got his hands on it, I will 100% support it. All right, so I'm going to be honest, I really don't know much about this one. Uh, this is kind of of the Great Snow Sea. Uh, what made me want to check this out is the fact that it's written by uh, Tsutomu Nihei, and the artwork is by somebody named uh, Itoe Takemoto. Uh, this is by Kodansha. I don't really know anything about this. Uh, I'm kind of, I guess, for the most part, going in blind, and given that it is Tsutomu Nihei, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a wild story, uh, super sci-fi, you know, like, I'm sure it's going to be like a sort of like a hard sci-fi, uh, sort of a story, or maybe not, you know, given that it doesn't look as intense as like the stuff that he's personally done, you know, like Biomega and like, and like Blam and whatnot. So I don't really know, you know, where it's going to go. I kind of wanted to just go in blind. I think I'm going to be talking about it for a video. So I'm definitely going to end up sooner or later reading it. For the most part, most of the things that I, you know, pick up on this channel somehow or another eventually end up, you know, being talked about further in a video. So I usually like to go in blind, but it kind of sucks in a sense, you know, because like it's kind of, it's kind of hard to do a whole video when you don't know anything about the manga that you're talking about. But one thing I will say is there's been a lot of like, you know, mangaka that are starting to kind of step away from the drawing part, you know, of storytelling and just kind of focus on the more writer side of it. Like, uh, Aka, Akasaka, you know, from, uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War is pretty much the writer of Oshinoko, but, uh, Mango Yakoyari, I think that person's name is, is the, for the most part, uh, the artist, you know, and then Tatsuki Fujimoto, I think also is stepping away from drawing Chainsaw Man and his assistants are drawing it so that he can just focus on writing it. So that is an interesting thing where I'm seeing a lot of more, I'm seeing a lot more writers or a lot more, yeah, mangaka and whatnot kind of step away from the drawing part of it to focus more on the writing part of it. And 
yeah, I'm going to be starting this at some point in time because I do want to, I do want to jump into it and kind of like talk about it in some form or another in a video, whether it's like, oh, uh, whether it's like a, uh, currently reading video or like a, Hey, have you read or maybe like a sci-fi video? Cause I've been wanting to do like a, I've been reading sci-fi video for a while now. I've done a bunch of like, I've been reading, uh, subjects like I've done, uh, I've been reading death game manga. I did. I've been reading manhwa. I, I've done a bunch of different ones. Uh, rom-com manga. I did a, uh, lewd manga one. So yeah, man, uh, at some point or another, I'll, I'll find a way to talk about this thing. If you've read it, I would love to know what you think about it. All right. So next up we've got origin volume four and volume five. I love origin. I have not read volume four yet, unfortunately, but I have read the first three, but I have read the first three volumes of origin and I absolutely love this damn series. Like I want to talk about it in a video. I want to do, I want to eventually do a, why you should read origin video because this series is just so bananas, dude. <laughs> it's so much fun. You know, like origin is such a fun story, dude. And and it's one of those series that, like, in my opinion, I feel like it refuses to take itself, like, too seriously. Like, there are moments that are, like, really deep and introspective, and there is, like, a lot of, like, um, I want to say, like, what does it mean to be human? This, this robot right here, uh, Origin, who basically assimilates, you know, into, uh, in this world, modern society, you know, works at this robot company so that he can steal parts or whatever to work on himself. And as he does all these things, you know, like he has to essentially, yeah, like he has to replace like kind of like a computer, you know, like you replace the parts of a computer to, to update it or whatever. You update the graphics card, you update this, you update that or whatever. Uh, and kind of, he's like, kind of like the same thing where like he needs to be constantly uh, upgrading himself, especially as he ends up offending uh, these other robots that are a part of like his extended robot family or whatever. I won't get too into that, but, uh, I talked about this in a video, if I'm not mistaken. I think one of my currently reading videos, I talked about origin. It was either a currently reading or a, Hey, have you read? But I know I talked about this for a video and yeah, it's such a wild uh, sort of a read. And one of my favorite things about it is that, like, the fact that he is essentially, like, a machine or whatever. And he ends up being put into the situation where he's kind of, like, like living, like, a human existence where he gets into debt. And he can't crawl out of the debt. <laughs> it's just so much fun, dude. And, like, it's really well, it's really well written, really well drawn, super action-packed. So much fun. It's, like, super funny. Like him as a character he's hilarious i think he's absolutely he's like if ryan gosling in uh blade runner 2049 was just an absolute goofball instead of being like just super serious all the time and don't get me wrong because like i love that movie i think that is a phenomenal film but yeah it's kind of like that but like a reverse in which like he's just like a goofball and he does like a lot of goofy stuff and misinterprets a lot of things because he is a machine and he thinks logically you know and doesn't really think emotionally so yeah, dude, I absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. Eventually going to knock out a, uh, why you should read. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, I don't know if I've said yet or not, but this is cold All right. Up next by Viz signature, we've got Chojin X volume four. Not really sure why I picked this up. <laughs> Nothing against the series. It's just like, I haven't even read volume two yet. And I picked up volume four just randomly. I think it was on sale. I do want to read it. Like it's on my to be read shelf. But chances are I'm probably not even going to be able to read volume two now until like maybe next year in 25. But uh, yeah, I mean, I do like, I did like, you know, what I read in volume one. And I follow a lot of people like I'm on Instagram, obviously, like I've got my handle right there. The Gonzo Collectibles account on Instagram. I liked quite a bit what I'd read of the first part of the first of the first volume essentially of children x and i did a video about it and i follow people on instagram that are always posting you know screenshots or whatever from uh the more recent chapters of children x and it looks like it's just going to get absolutely ridiculous and i'm really happy about that because people i remember when the first volume dropped for whatever was available at the time of chapters people were saying that it really wasn't that great it was kind of mid I guess like the first part of Shoji Nags wasn't super duper strong, but 
I guess as it gets going, as like you know, as time has gone on, it's gotten a lot stronger. So I'm excited about that. Like I want to see where this story is going to go. And given some of the panels that I've seen, I'm not going to share too much, you know, of that. But given what I've seen, that's definitely got me excited. And I mean, being that it is Sui Shida who did uh, Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re, I have nothing but faith that this could end up becoming another, you know, classic by this solid mangaka. So, yeah, if you've read this one, I'd love to know what you think about it. All right, so next up, we've got Welcome Back, Alice, Volume 7. Uh, this is by Kodansha. This closes out Welcome Back, Alice. This is one of those series that pretty much from the jump, I was a fan of. I'm kind of bummed that it's over. <laughs> I like the ending. There was a part, I don't want to say too much about it, you know, for anybody that maybe hasn't read the series yet or, or isn't through reading it yet or not. But I know this was like a super polarizing story for a lot of people. I personally loved it. It is, for the most part, a queer manga and focuses on a sort of like a, a sort of queer relationship. But it is a really strong story and. There are parts in the beginning where one of the characters does things that, you know, make you not be so much a fan of them. But at the end of this volume, uh, at the end of this volume, uh, Shuzo Oshimi kind of gives like a three, four page, you know, breakdown of what he did with the, with the series and kind of talks about that as well. You know, where like he wasn't super happy with the direction that I was going in and he started to like, I guess like course correct at some point in time. So it kind of feels like, yeah, it's one of those things where like he really didn't, I want to say that I'm not trying to put words in his mouth where like he really didn't know what he was doing with that specific character when he was writing them. And I feel like as it, gets going into like five six whatever chapter volumes that character starts to feel more fleshed out and thankfully so you know because in the beginning they were kind of like all over the place you know emotionally and it didn't really make sense you know as to what he was trying to do with them they kind of just were whatever to fit any specific scene they really weren't established like this is who this character is but for the most part I had a lot of fun with it. It's over now. So, if you've also read this thing, I'd love to know what you think about it. I'm on. I'm honestly gonna. I'm probably gonna start reading another Shuzo Oshimi story because, like, I wanna. I wanna eventually do a. Uh, I eventually wanna do a mangaka spotlight for Shuzo Oshimi. So, I wanna knock out all the other stuff of his that I haven't read because I've read a lot of his stuff at this point. I haven't read Flowers of Evil yet, so I need to read that and. I need to read some of his other ones that are just kind of like random uh, stories. I've been reading a little bit more of uh, Blood on the Tracks. I think I finished like volume three of it, volume three or four or whatever. And like I need to continue reading that one because I think like volume 17 uh, just ended Blood on the Tracks, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, like I need to read a bunch of his stuff and just start like, just start trying to like catch up and whatnot so I can eventually drop a uh, mangaka spotlight video for Shuzo Oshimi, but I have read a lot of like his random ones like uh, Avant-Garde Yumeko and Sweet Poolside and just like some of those other ones. I still need to read uh, Shio Can't Say Her Name or Shino Can't Say Her Name or whatever, but yeah, this is honestly the first one of his that I've actually uh, completely completed, so I need to go back and do the same thing with Happiness. <laughs> I need to finish Happiness because I've never finished it and also need to, yeah, I need to keep reading uh, Blood on the Tracks so I can finish that one. And, yeah, dude, Shuzo Oshimi is one of those creators, in my opinion, that is just an absolutely brilliant mangaka and deserves a ton of respect for his ability to climb into things that a lot of people might find uh, uncomfortable or whatever. You know, those are the sorts of subjects that he always tackles. Whatever makes people uncomfortable, that's the thing that he's honing in on and that's something that, like, I really respect about his... Uh, uh, about his uh, artwork. Alright, so up next we've got Sawada and the House of Monsters. This is volume 3. This is by Seven Seas. This is one of those series that I really think deserves an anime. I think if Sawada and the House of Monsters got an anime, I think it would do well. Uh, this is a solid series. Pretty much there is this girl who... Uh, lives in this kingdom and there's like this war between humanity and monsters and she spends like literally her whole life up until like a so she's like a teenager or whatever 
learning to fight these monsters and then once she finally is old enough or whatever or trained up enough to to join the army or whatever and go out there and fight monsters there's a peace treaty you know between humanity and the monsters and her position is no longer necessary so like she no longer has a job or anything and is essentially like you know set out into the world having no purpose any longer but she's like this trained killing machine and I like the juxtaposition between that, like her being this like this just like straight up killing machine who had her family killed by monsters and then she ends up working with these dwarves that build houses for monsters. And I think I've likened this in the past to Dungeon Meshi, I think is what it's called. Uh, Delicious and Delicious in Dungeon. Where pretty much like instead of being about food, it's about a girl who uh, helps dwarves build houses for monsters and it's super intricate like like we go through like all the super fine details of building these houses and it's really cool man to see you know to see the way that everything to see the way that everything is done i thought it was really awesome and since delicious and dungeon has done so well i could see a studio jumping at the chance to pick up sawada and house of monsters and turn it into an anime like the, the opportunities right there <laughs> i definitely think it's worth it i mean i've seen manga that like i never even heard of that get turned into an anime and this is something that i think definitely deserves that opportunity so up next we've got i want to do bad things with you this is by viz shonen sunday this is one that i'm actually in the middle of you can see right there i got my i got my bookmark there i was hoping to finish it before knocking this video out but unfortunately i could not <laughs> So I'll have to try to finish it over the weekend or whatever. But this is a cute story. Pretty much this girl right here falls in love with a bad boy. But he's not like your typical bad boy. You know, like he's more of like he's short and he's kind of awkward. A lot of his life he spent in a wheelchair and he walks around with a cane. Uh, pretty much this girl is kind of like, like in a lot of like uh, rom-com stuff, you know, like you got the guy who is... I've talked about this before a bunch, and like, and I talked about it in my I've been reading rom com video as well. Where like you have the lead guy who is super boring and has like no personality at all. And one of the ones that I'm thinking of when I when I mention that is I think of things like uh, Google won't let me be invisible. You know, it's kind of like one of those sort of situations. Only instead of it being a boy, it's a girl, and in this case, it's this girl right here. Only she's got kind of like a she's all that sort of a thing going on, you know, like uh, where she is kind of like nerdy, kind of dorky or whatever, and kind of exists in the shadows. People don't really pay much attention to her. They kind of act like she isn't there, or if they do acknowledge her, it's usually to ask her to do their... their um, I guess school responsibilities, you know, their chores or whatever for school, their cleanup, she, they ask her to do it because they figure, oh, she doesn't mind, she's a pushover, she'll do whatever. And she ends up meeting this dude who is sort of like this villain and it reminds her of this cartoon that she watches, I think, or an, I forgot if it was a cartoon or like, or like a, uh, or like a, uh, a manga or whatever, but it reminds her of that and he asks her to do something bad and she feels like they are in cahoots because she did this bad thing, you know, with him. Hence the title, I want to do bad things with you. And it kind of starts from there and they start doing like like little random, like childish, you know, sorts of things together. And it means the world to her, you know, because she's a part of something and she's starting to stand out. And she starts to like dress a little bit differently and position herself a little bit differently, like kind of like uh, push her chest out more and whatnot and people start to take notice of her she starts to like yeah like stand out more and whatnot and and it's i like it you know what i mean uh, i've enjoyed it so far i'm gonna try to knock this uh volume out uh i'm not in love with it so whether or not you know i'll pick up volume two i haven't quite decided yet i almost wasn't gonna pick it up just because like i kind of have a feeling you know like it's just gonna be the same thing you know the whole series and i feel like i've read enough you know of that i was kind of hoping for a little bit something a little bit different than what i got with this but Depending on, you know, where this ends up, you know, in the last, I don't know what, like 20-ish pages, depending on where, you know, it ends up closing out the story, I may pick up volume two from there, you know, pre-order it because I don't think it's out yet. 
yeah, I mean, that is a cute story. If you're into these sorts of things, I think you're going to have a great time with this one. It's kind of like a reverse, you know, like a gender reverse, you know, instead of it being, like, an awkward dude who falls for, like, this this girl who is a babe or whatever. It's this, this girl who falls for a dude who is, you know, that. But he's not really, like, a babe. He's still, like, the, the awkward dude, but he tries to be kind of like a badass kind of reminds me of like youth in revolt you know i don't know if any of you have seen that movie or not if you're millennials like myself <laughs> and you've seen youth in revolt but that's kind of what it made that's kind of what it made me uh made me think of in like uh a little bit of like she's all that so yeah all right up next we've got chain soldier volume eight this story in all honesty is kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine i have a bunch of those <laughs> There's some stuff I like to read just because, like, I'm a fan of trash. And and I'll be honest, while this is, for the most part, like, kind of trash, it's good trash. You know, like, the story's actually good. I like the situation, you know, with this sort of world. And pretty much, Chain Soldier, it also has an anime. Uh, Chain Soldier is about this dude who gets pulled into this other world and gets lashed, sort of, to this commander... Uh, sort of a girl who makes him, who, like, transforms him, I guess, if you will, into, like, this beast or whatever, and they fight these beings called, like, Mato, and pretty much, like, when he is transformed, she uses him to fight those uh, Mato things, and then when he uh, basically reverts back to being human, she has to give him a sort of reward, and it's usually a super perverted reward, and each time... Uh, it escalates further and further in perversion or whatever. But that aside, I actually really like it. I've had a lot of fun with it. I like the anime as well. Uh, the anime I wasn't a huge fan of because I didn't think it did the artwork a ton of justice because this has really solid art. So that's one of the, that's one of the things that I look for in a story in general is that it has solid art. Because I'm not just going to read something because it is trash. I want to read something that that is, for the most part, yeah, trashy, but it also has, like like great artwork that's one of my favorite things you know about reading manga is getting into things that have you know for the most part like solid art and that are going to keep me uh invested and yeah i haven't read uh, the last two volumes of this i still need to read uh volume seven and volume eight but but yeah man i'm i have no complaints about it <laughs> if you're into this sort of thing i think you'll have a blast with it it's kind of like it's like um high school dxd if you're a fan of high school dxd i think you're gonna have a great time uh with chain soldier all right, so up next, we've got Gachi Akuta, Volume 3. This is by uh, Kodansha. So, Gachi Akuta is one of those things... I did a video about this, by the way. Uh, Gachi Akuta... Or I talked about it in a currently reading or something video. But I love this series, dude. It's so wild. Like, the artwork, the fights, whatnot. I haven't read this volume yet, but I have read the first two volumes of it. The absolute brilliance of the story uh the power system is cool you know because you have all these different sorts of characters that are these things called givers and they imbue like uh they imbue i guess like ordinary objects with a sort of like mana they give it life or whatever and they turn them into like i want to say like objects of power i forgot what the actual word is for the thing that they do but it kind of reminds me of like astral royale which i think which came out like way more recently than this. This has been around, this has been out a lot longer than Astral Royale, but that's kind of what it makes me think of. Where like an Astral Royale, like you have like a totem or whatever, and you can use that to uh, use like a sort of power called an Astro. And with this, you know, these people being givers, they are able to imbue certain things, you know, with uh, like I said, like a sort of mana. And pretty much with this story, we follow... Oh, this is getting an anime. I totally forgot. Yeah, this is getting an anime, which I'm really excited about. But pretty much we follow this kid who lived in, like, this floating city. And from that city, he is banished because of a crime that he is framed for. And when he's framed for that crime, he's thrown out of the floating city and ends up falling to the earth below that is littered with the trash of the people from this floating city. And down on the earth, he meets, like, a whole cast of just the most 
outrageous, outlandish characters, and they're so much fun. And the dude who is on the cover of the second volume, which I'll post over here, he's a lot of fun too. And there's some exchanges between the dude from uh, the sky and that dude from the ground that are a lot of fun. It reminded me so much. Uh, their shenanigans reminded me so much of like Aki meeting uh, Denji for the first time. And that's really what, that's really what, what it reminded me of in uh, Chainsaw Man. And yeah, I, I can't wait to pick this. I can't wait to jump into this third volume, dude, because this series has just been an absolute blast. And if you haven't read, if you haven't read Gotcha Kuta yet, I highly recommend uh, checking it out. Next up, we've got Adol Volumes 2 and three this is by kodansha i think these are the volumes that are available so far i'm not sure if volume four is out yet or not but i love volume one of the series uh excited to jump into volume two and volume three this series reminded me so much of akira and the cool thing is like uh right here i won't show you that but i'll show you that right there it pretty much right there it says that it's like it's something that is geared towards fans of akira and even before i even picked it up like when i saw the artwork on i was just like dude this looks so much like akira and you know even reading it you know like once i read volume one i the the akira vibes exploded by like 20 fold so honestly if you're a fan of that i think you're gonna have a blast with adol yeah, the characters in this are pretty wild. I wasn't really sure, you know, where the story was going to go at first, but, you know, pretty much we follow this young kid who is named, like, Eito as he meets this other girl whose name I can't remember right now off the top of my head. But pretty much they link up, and he, at some point in time, tries to leave her behind because he's afraid that something's going to happen to her because he is kind of like a test subject or whatever, for the, at this facility and the people from the facility that he is the test subject at come looking for him and she almost gets killed in the process of trying to protect him and he wants to protect her by trying to separate her from that and she kind of like refuses to uh, leave him alone the artwork is solid uh it's such a wild story. I talked about it in a currently reading video I think it was yeah I think I talked about it in my last currently reading video so yeah if you want to learn more about Adol, you can do so by watching that video. I talked about it pretty in depth, but yeah, I love the artwork for this thing. Like it is for the most part, its own thing kind of even reminds me of like, uh, of Elf and Lead a little bit. And I won't go too into why it reminds me of Elf and Lead, but yeah, it does remind me of different things like that. And the artwork is cool, you know, kind of like a dystopian sort of a future, like super overcrowded a lot of like uh people all over the place but then there's also like really like yeah i want to say like yeah why not dystopian sorts of elements to it and yeah it's such a solid read and i think this is going to do really well over time i think this may end up even you know potentially being regarded eventually as like a uh, cold classic all right next up we've got yomotsu hegui the tree of death and this is by seven seas i absolutely loved the first volume of yomotsu hegui i talked about it in my i think i keep wanting to say my last currently reading video and that's one of those things that you can expect from this channel is that i'm gonna find a way to talk about a series in a lot of um detail in certain videos you know like whether it's like a currently reading or like a hey have you read or really any other number of things that like you know i do any of the formats you know that like i talk about manga on this channel for the most part when i do these haul videos like i can't really talk too much about things because the haul video is going to end up being like four hours long <laughs> and i don't want my some of my haul videos are already extremely long and i can't i can't have that i can't i can't have a haul video being two hours long I feel like I'm already pushing it with my last one being like an hour and 20 minutes. But, uh, yeah, dude, Yomotsu Hegui is absolutely incredible because of the artwork by Masasumi Kakizaki. And I actually have another one by Mas Masasumi Kakizaki as well that I'll show you in a little bit, which is one of my Spanish uh, pickups. But, yeah, Yomotsu Hegui is solid because it is just absolutely cinematic. There is this character who is named like Nawa and he at some point in time loses his family 
and he tries to get revenge on the people that killed his family and ends up going to prison, gets out of prison like 15 years later or something like that. If I'm, if I remember correctly, I can't remember if it was like five or like 15 years later, uh, he gets out of prison and ends up trying to track down one of the guys that survived learns he is this like sort of like hand of the shinigami you know shinigami being this character right here there's this whole you know world thing and like i said if you want to like get really into it i talk about it in my uh currently reading video but he becomes like this crazy like cthulhu sort of a uh, creature and it's a lot of fun uh i guess like more of like a dark sort of fun because it is like really brooding and whatnot kind of reminds me of like uh law-abiding citizen uh maybe even the crow uh brandon lee's the crow i haven't seen the new crow and i'm never gonna see the new crow <laughs> yeah this one's a lot of i keep wanting to say fun but it's not a lot of fun because it's actually like really brooding really dark but it is really well written love the artwork kind of reminds me of like jagan you know because there is like kind of like an element like that you know where like in jagan you've got the fractured frogs and in this one you've got a uh, kind of like a fruit that people eat and it makes them basically immortal and there's a character in this that uses the fruit to make a person immortal so that he can torture them infinitely and it's really brutal it's really screwed up you know if you really think about that like someone keeping you alive and you know basically having you regenerate so that they can just keep torturing you torturing you over and over it's really brutal and yeah, I love this dude's artwork. This is the second series of his that I read. I read the first uh, volume of Bastiarius, which is also really good. And I eventually want to read more of his stuff. So, yeah. This is, uh, I think, the first one of his that's in English, if I'm not mistaken. If there are others in English, please, le please let me know. Because I can't think of any right now off the top of my head that are available in English so far. Other than other than uh, Yomotsu Hegui. But I really like this one. If you've read it, I'd love to know what you think about it. All right, so next up we've got Search and Destroy. Uh, this is volume one. This is released by MSX. Never heard of them. Or Fanto Graphics or whatever. But uh, yeah, pretty much this is based on, I think, Dororo, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what it said on the back here. That's based on like Dororo. That kind of piqued my interest. And... And looking at the artwork, what's funny is like it kind of reminds me of like Galaxy Express uh, 999, which I actually saw that film not too long ago. Like I, I bought the, the Blu-ray of uh, Galaxy Express 999. And I know there's like a whole bigger narrative or whatever around uh, that universe. And I don't know if I'm ever going to get into it because like some of those DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever, I think are like a thousand dollars and no thank you. <laughs> I did really enjoy the movie though. The movie's really good. And uh kind of what this reminds me of makes me also kind of based on like that right there with that dude kind of makes me think of like Atlas Shrugged a little bit even though it has nothing to do with any of that and it's based on like uh, I did read Atlas Shrugged by the way. I read the whole thing. But uh it makes me think of that. I don't know. I'm just like when I look at a thing, you know, I I start trying to compare it to things that I'm familiar with. And I've never read Dororo, so like I'm not familiar with that, but I know that that's what it's based on. I am going to be doing this in a video. I don't know when exactly, but it is planned. It's coming out either in September or October, but there is a video coming. So like I really don't know too much about it right now, but once I do read it, you know, as I, as I read, you know, I kind of write my thoughts down. That way, by the time I finish reading it. I don't have to say, I don't have to go back and go like, what, what happened again? You know, like I just write my thoughts as I go that way. Like by the time I'm finished with it, I can just like sit down, record my video about it, you know, draw my let's talk about. Cause that's, that's what I'm going to be doing about this one is a let's talk about. And I don't know, the artwork just sold me, dude. I saw that artwork and I was like, this needs to be talked about in some manner or another. So yeah, it's a nice thick volume, which I love. I'm always a fan of that. And uh, yeah, if you've read this, please let me know what you think. If you read any of these, let me know in the comments. Also, please let me know what you've picked up. What manga series are you currently reading? What have you read recently? It doesn't even have to be manga. It can just be like a book that you read recently or an audio book that you listen to or a film that you watch, whatever you want to uh, let me know in the comments, man. Just drop it all down there i'm always I always read them i usually respond for the most part i feel like i'm pretty good about responding to to everybody so yeah 
All right, so now for the biggest disappointment of my haul, we've got Captain Momo's Secret Base. This is by Dark Horse. This is honestly a massive disappointment for me. I read this like almost as soon as I got it. Like I think the day that I got my hands on it, I read it and was utterly disappointed in it. And that, that's kind of a shame because like this this creator is supposed to be super celebrated. Genji Tsuruta is supposed to be like super celebrated. And I just, because he did Eminon, I guess, and everybody like raves about that. And I had Eminon in a cart and I took it out of my cart. <laughs> that's how disappointed I was in this thing. And I was just like, if Eminon is anything like this, I don't even want to read it. I was going to, I was going to talk about this in my in my autumn currently reading video but i don't even think i'm going to talk about it in that video anymore i'm just going to like pick something else up and talk about that instead because this is so paper thin if you like this thing please let me know in the comments like what you enjoyed about it i'm not trying to say that to be nasty i'm genuinely curious because i thought it was like super pretentious like i just didn't like it i felt like she was like just overall like a really pretentious character and she is for the most part like a freight sort of a driver but like in outer space and she goes on like these long winded diatribes about you know her job or i don't know it's it's really she's she's essentially like a hikikomori super un uninteresting character like i don't i didn't see a single thing about her that was of note that made me think like damn i need to read the next volume to see what happens next it's supposed to be like a slice of life but it's probably like the worst slice of life i've ever read <laughs> Like, a good one that I think is a strong example of a solid story that's kind of like a slice of life sort of thing is Tokyo These Days, which I talked about in a video, either like, hey, have you read or a currently reading video or whatever. But that's a slow one as well, but it's well done, you know, because it's building up these characters' lives and you see the things that they go through day to day as they're pretty much all retired characters, but still you're interested in the things that they have going on because they've lived these rich lives you know and like manga maybe didn't pan out for them and now they're doing something else but they're trying to put together like a super group or whatever of like old mangaka that are all you know i guess legends in their own right you know and whatnot and that story is really well done this was just trash in my opinion and not good trash this is just boring she's also naked like literally the whole volume <laughs> This is honestly the most clothes right here that she ever has on. Like, even in the volume, like, she puts on, like, I think her jacket or whatever, and that's it. Otherwise, she's fully naked the whole volume, and, like, it's pretty much, like, full frontal nudity. Not that I'm, like, you know, against that sort of a thing, because I'm not a prude or anything, but it's just, it serves no purpose. Like, there's literally no reason for her to be fully naked. I guess she's just, like, an exhibitionist or whatever, and then she's got, like, a bunch of books, and, yeah, it's just... I don't know, man, it felt really pretentious to me. You know, like, everything she says is super pretentious. Doesn't really have any character at all. I couldn't care less about her or about her cat or this, this whole story. I mean, the idea, some of the ideas that it presents are, for the most part, interesting. You know, like, uh, the way the space travel happens in the future. And, like, she pretty much drives this freight forwarder. It doesn't even really drive because she just literally sits around and reads books all day. And it essentially drives itself there's, there's really no point in her even being there but she gives like this long-winded uh explanation about why she has to be there i guess because that's like the plot armor for her to be there for the story to exist that i just i don't know dude i couldn't care less and i'm probably gonna end up getting rid of this thing i'll probably like pawn it off on one of my friends because <laughs> yeah this was just awful to me man and i'm sorry i really don't like hating on anything I really don't like to do that because this isn't a channel. This isn't like a channel where like I just tear stories apart. This is a channel where like I want to celebrate storytelling, but unfortunately I could not find a single positive thing about this. And like I read the whole thing. I kind of like hate read it, I guess, if you will. But yeah, I just, I don't have any intention of ever reading another, <laughs> another volume of this manga. On to a thing that I actually do like though is Snowball Earth. I haven't read the second volume of Snowball Earth yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because I loved uh, the first volume of it. I talked about it in my, I want to say my currently reading video, summer currently reading video. Uh, this is by Viz Signature. This definitely took me by surprise, you know, because like I went into it expecting one thing and came out 
with a completely different thing, which I'm a huge fan of. I love a story that will subvert your expectations, and that's what Snowball Earth did for me. It totally subverted my expectations. This is a lot more dark than I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, a lot more fun. <laughs> Honestly, I thought this series was going to be, like, a lot of fun, just, like, goofy as hell. And, like, it is, like, really goofy at times, but it's also really serious at times. And the artwork is absolutely solid. Pretty much, we follow this kid who is, like, uh, Hikikomori, much like the other character. But, like, with him, it's, uh, like, he is just really bad at making friends. It's not like that he doesn't want to make friends. It's just that he's bad at it. Like, he tries to make friends and ends up just looking like a creep. You know, when he smiles, he, he, people take it the wrong way. He looks he looks terrifying or whatever. And, uh... Pretty much, like, by the end of the, the first volume, we meet, like, a whole cast of characters. And she's one of the characters that we meet, you know, in this this future. Uh, I don't want to say too much about it here, because I've talked about it before in my other video. But I'll give you just enough, you know, to kind of give you an idea. Pretty much, like, he uh, pilots this... Um, so, pretty much, this kid pilots this uh, robot that is like his best friend because he doesn't he's not friends with any human beings because he's really bad at you know communicating with people so his best friend is like a robot that he pilots and something happens and the kid ends up on earth but like 10 years have passed he goes into like cryo sleep or whatever and wakes up like 10 years later and the earth is frozen over and it's pretty wild uh shenanigans ensue <laughs> like shenanigans literally ensue and we get, like, this really cool scene of these people, like, taking apart this gaiju. Because in the world of Snowball Earth, uh, humanity goes to war with the gaiju. And humanity loses the war to the gaiju. Uh, bringing upon an event, which is, like, a real event or whatever that could potentially happen. Uh, called Snowball Earth. And, yeah, pretty much this gaiju event brings about Snowball Earth and... Yeah, he wakes up 10 years later and the earth is frozen over and a bunch of stuff happens and he has to help these people in this future survive and fight against the kaiju given that he has like pretty much like expert knowledge about how to fight them. So I'm really excited to jump into this this uh, second volume because I love the artwork, I love the story, I love the lead character. He, he is like a hikikomori but he's also like so much fun, you know, to, to hang out with because he's got like this ingenuity. He figures his way out of, like, any problem, and that's something that I really like. I like a character that, like, instead of, like, you know, cowering in the corner, crying about his problems, he's, like, trying to meet them head on. So, hopefully, you know, in this volume, he'll talk and make some friends and whatnot, and, yeah, we'll see where the rest of it goes. And now, for one of the most depressing things ever, one of the best series that I have personally ever read, uh, we've got Boys Abyss, Volume 6, by Ryo Minenami, and this is by, C by Viz Signature. I love Boys Abyss. I'm going to be doing a video about this extremely soon. I think I mentioned that in my last haul video. But it's actually happening a lot sooner now. I've been writing my review. I just need to read uh, volumes 5 and 6. and Which is this one right here. This is volume 6. And once I've read these two, I will begin recording uh, that video. Because I really do want to do it before the end of the year. And... Boys Abyss, I've talked about this series endlessly, I've gushed over it. It is just one of the most brutally depressing things that I've ever read. But at the same time, it's like, I've, I've, I've described this thing as like a train wreck that you just cannot look away from. You know what I mean? Like, it is, you're like a voyeur watching these people's just absolutely ridiculously flawed lives, you know? And... I feel like that's like the most human thing, you know, we're like, as people, a lot of us do have skeletons, we have things that we're not proud of that we did in the past, and if you live long enough, you tend to have more different things that you're regretful of, or whatever, or that you just kind of wish never happened, but hopefully they're not nearly as bad as the stuff that happens in this series, because some of it is pretty rough, and yeah, pretty much we follow this kid, uh, not him, but we follow a kid who essentially, you know, gets involved with, like, an ex-idol. And, you know, through getting involved with her, the people in his life end up being sucked into the vortex of, you know, their whole thing. And 
it's really wild, man, the way that essentially like this whole town ends up literally getting pulled into this vortex of these two people. And I think it's like 14, 15 volumes in Japanese. I think it's ending in Japanese if it's not already over. And we're barely up to like volume six. I think volume seven is coming out soon. So we're like, I guess like halfway there. And it's one of those stories where it's just like, I don't know how this dude has managed to draw so much out of it, you know, because of how miserable it is. And how do you just keep making it more and more screwed up than it already was? Kind of reminds you of like Goodnight Boon Boon. If you've ever read Goodnight Boon Boon, that is such a solid example. And I love that story, by the way, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. But that's a solid example of, you know, like escalation, you know, just like getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And that's kind of like what this is too. That's kind of what this makes me feel like. Like this is potentially just going to keep getting worse and worse and I have no idea where it's ultimately going to end. I don't want to know if you've finished reading it possibly in Japanese or or like read it on scan sites or whatever. I don't want to know because I want to enjoy the ride. <laughs> but yeah, man, Boys Abyss, such a solid read. Highly recommend it if you want like a good miserable uh, experience. All right, let's jump into the Omnis up here to kick it off. We got a story that I never thought that I would own. <laughs> I really didn't. I was never going to pick this up. I remember I talked about this in my lewd manga video, and I was like, I'm never going to pick up Do You Like Big Girls? And then they dropped a Omni, and I was like, all right, I guess I'm picking up Do You Like Big Girls? <laughs> this is by Ghost Ship, and I like that it says Thick edition there let me see if i can focus the camera yeah thick edition and i thought that was kind of hilarious dude but that's the only reason i picked this up is that they did an omni for it because i was never going to pick this up because like i'm just i'm kind of i kind of hit a point where like i really don't want to pick up too much more trash if it's trash that i was already reading you know things like uh which is of Adamas, you know, which is like super trash, but that's something that I was already reading. Like, I only have so much shelf space, so like, I'm not trying to, you know, buy too much more garbage. I want to start, you know, buying stuff that is more of a solid story. But given that this wasn't an Omni, I was like, you know what, uh, I'll do it, you know, for an Omni. And pretty much from what I've heard people talk about with Do You Like Big Girls, this is definitely on the trashier side. And I'm one of those people where, like, I like, I'll read almost anything. I'm not, you know, above reading certain things. And, yeah, I'm all over the damn place with, with manga and with just uh, media in general. So, yeah, pretty much this dude right here uh, ends up getting it on <laughs> with pretty much, like, the whole uh, girls volleyball team. And, yeah, it's just trash, dude. Like, you're not going to get anything fulfilling out of reading this. You know what I mean? This isn't Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> you know, this is just, it is what it is. You know, and I'm one of those people, like, I can appreciate just dumb stories and whatnot. And I feel like you need to, at some point in time, experience trash so that you can appreciate uh, things that are more well-rounded and more solid experiences, storytelling-wise. And, yeah, I'm definitely going to give it a shot and if i don't like it much like i didn't like uh the white mage one uh i'll probably just sell it or whatever if i end up not not liking this so yeah i got the first volume of these omnis and yeah i'm gonna give it a shot and see how i ultimately feel about it so let's talk about sigua terra i think that's how this is pronounced i'm not quite sure this series is off the wall bonkers <laughs> This is one of those things, though, like, I was in Orlando recently uh, for a work trip, and while I was in Orlando, I ended up hitting up the same Barnes & Noble that I hit up two years ago. So, two years ago, I did a video where, like, I went to Barnes & Noble, or I went to, like, three Barnes & Nobles, and uh, just, like, randomly recorded or whatever, and not my favorite video that I've ever done. I got a lot of flack on it because like i don't know i guess i was too far away from the shelves or whatever and like i was just really nervous because like i never really recorded in a barnes and noble and i haven't recorded in one since and i'm probably never going to do another one of those videos ever but i pretty much went back to one of the first barnes and nobles that i had hit uh when i made that video and i ended up finding this there and i picked up another volume of manga as well that i'll also bring up in a little bit but I picked up this volume, and then I also picked up volumes 2 and 3 later on. But, uh, they only had this volume, and 
pretty much while I was in my hotel room, I started reading it and I read like a good chunk of it. I actually finished the whole thing already, but I read the good chunk of it and um, I should just show you the other volumes as well. <laughs> and yeah, here's volume two and then here's uh, volume three. So I ended up pretty much picking up the whole set, the whole series of uh, Shigua Tera, I guess if you will. Uh, and this is by Kodansha, but these are all Omnis collected in, in all together. Three uh, pretty thick Omnis. But yeah, this series is absolutely bananas, dude. I had so much fun reading this first volume. And come to realize, this creator is was, I guess, a huge influence on Goodnight Boom Boom's creator, Inio Asano. And... If you've read good, if you've read Goodnight Boon Boon and you read this, like I feel like you're gonna see so many similarities between the two, and this actually predates Goodnight Boon Boon by like three or four years, maybe five years if I'm not mistaken. I think this started serialization in like 2001 and ended in like 2004, and Goodnight Boon Boon I think began serialization in 2004, in 2006 or something like that. I could be completely wrong about that. If I am, I apologize. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, I'm pretty sure like this creator actually influenced uh, Inio Asano. So like that, that I mean, you, you can totally see it when you read this thing. I don't want to say too much about it because I feel like you should go in kind of like I did semi-blind. Like I, I honestly, I went in completely blind because there's like nothing on the back. It doesn't tell you anything about what it's about. And I love the artwork in this series. It is absolutely insane. <laughs> Like, the faces some of these characters make in this manga are just, like, ridiculous. They make some of the dumbest faces, dude. And I just could not put it down. Like, I just wanted to, I knocked out the whole thing because I just could not stop reading it. I fell so madly in love. And I wanted to jump into Volume 2, but I didn't because, like, I got other stuff I want to do for videos and whatnot. But, uh... Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I will give you a little bit of it, I guess. There's this kid right here who gets his, like, uh, motorcycle license or whatever. And he meets this girl there at the same place where he gets his motorcycle license. And he basically, like, falls in love with her or whatever because she's cute. And there they become, like, really good friends. And, uh, like, the situations in it are absolutely wild. He's got another friend uh, who he and this friend of his are, like, being bullied by this older kid and and some things happen that make the story take like a little bit of a darker turn kind of i guess like that film bully or whatever but uh overall incredible story dude the storytelling is solid uh the faces this kid makes are ridiculous the faces some of the other characters also make are just absolutely wild i don't know i have nothing but praise for this thing i honestly if I had to give this a rating, I would honestly give it like a 5 out of 5. And that's just talking about this first volume. I don't want to say too much about it. Because, yeah, like I feel like this is one of those things where like you should just buy it. Just buy it, going blind. Beyond, you know, what I'm saying about it right now. Because, I, yeah, I mean, I've given you a little bit of it. But I'm not, I haven't given you everything. And, yeah, just, just read it. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Pick up the whole set. Or at least pick up this first volume of it. And if you fall in love with it the way that I did, uh, pick up the other two. Pick up these other two volumes, uh, two and uh, three, because I'm excited to continue it and to eventually finish it. And I am I definitely want to knock out a video about the series at some point in time. So, yeah, this is going to be a highly recommend from me. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, definitely worth checking out. Initial D, volume two. This is by Kodansha. So, I haven't started this yet, but I loved the first volume of this thing. I'm not really into racing. I've never been into racing, but I am a part of the generation that grew up with the initial uh, Fast and Furious movie. Like, I was like 11, 12 years old when the first uh, Fast and Furious movie came out. Like, I had the Blu-ray. I probably still have the Blu-ray somewhere. Even as a dude who is not a racing fan, Initial D really took me by surprise. I did the first volume of it in a video of these Omnis, I should say, because this already existed in, like, I guess, like a single edition. And I don't know if you can still get those singles or not, but it was, it was re-released in these Omnis. And I'm super grateful to Kodansha for uh, re-releasing Initial D in these Omnis. And I do want to read this one. Volume 3 is coming out literally, like, next week. <laughs> and I still haven't even read the second volume, but 
I already have volume three pre-ordered anyway, just because I want to, I want to collect it. I want to support it so that we get more, you know, Omnis and I always support series because like, I just want to get more of those series and even if I'm not going to read it right away, I do want to support it just to show that there is love and appreciation, you know, for all the work that these companies, you know, are putting in like Ghost Ship or not really Ghost Ship, but um, I think Seven Seas is the actual company itself. And then Ghost Ship is like a brand of it. And, you know, Kodansha and all these other publishers that are just constantly pumping out uh, these editions, you know, like Omnis and whatnot. And I do want to see more Omnis of more series, you know, as a dude that doesn't want to like always collect singles for every single thing. Having Omnis is so much, is so much better for me. And, yeah, I like the series a lot. Pretty much this dude who uh, gets into racing accidentally. You know, he doesn't. He didn't really mean to get into racing, but uh, he is like the delivery driver for his family's business. Uh, his dad puts him up to it, and his dad kind of like makes him go down this hill without spilling uh, a drop of water in this trueno, and he just like wants to hone his driving skills to become a better delivery driver and inadvertently ends up beating this other dude who is like like straight up a racer you know like he is like a full-time racer has spent tons of money you know on his car souping up his car or whatever and this dude and this old true i know and this old beat up true i know just like beats this racer you know and and they all like in this whole racing circuit or whatever starts talking about the dude on Mount Akagi, I think it is, in the universe, who beat this dude, just in a true, I know who, yeah, beat this dude who's in, like, this uh, super expensive car that's got, like, who knows how much, you know, under the hood, and, yeah, I love the story, dude, and I'm definitely excited to eventually uh, jump into Volume 2, and I feel like this is one of those things where, like, even if you're not a fan of cars, like myself, I'm really not uh, much of a of a car person. I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, I feel like if I can get into it, anybody can, you know, pick up Initial D and become a huge fan as well. All right, so next up, we've got The Fable Volume 2 and Volume 3. I had pre-ordered this from Crunchyroll and canceled my pre-order because Crunchyroll dropped the ball pretty hard. And... I was super upset about that because <laughs> it was literally like two months after or something like that after I'd, I'd pre-ordered it like months in advance and it never shipped and I was really upset and then I ended up just asking Crunchyroll to cancel my pre-order. I think I ended up picking this up through Amazon and I picked this up through Amazon as well. But yeah, these are the first, uh, these are, uh, yeah, volumes two and uh, three of The Fable and I've watched the anime of The Fable on Hulu and absolutely love it. I feel like it is a super underrated uh, anime because like nobody is talking about it. I really don't see anybody that I know talking about the anime. Obviously, the manga is super celebrated, you know, and has like a pretty big uh, cult following. And speaking of mangas with cult followings, we're getting Ichi the Killer. I think it's Kodansha, if I'm not mistaken, that's dropping Ichi the Killer. Or Seven Seas, one of them. I can't remember who the hell it is. I'll post, you know, whoever's dropping uh, Ichi the Killer. But I'm super excited, dude. I cannot believe we're actually getting each of the killer. I'm so I'm so pumped about that, dude, because like that's one of those series that like I love the movie. Like I watched the movie when I was a teenager and it was just one of the most insane things that I've ever seen. So it feels so wild that we're getting the manga and I've wanted it for so long. I hope that eventually we get like a mail uh reprint or something, you know, mail by um uh I forgot what that dude's name is. I'll put it right here. But the one of the like a half of the duo that comprise the dudes that make that make uh, uh, Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service. I can't remember what his name is off the top of my head. Hosui or something? I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, I think that's who it is. But yeah, like I said, I'll put his name. Um, but we're getting a lot more stuff, you know, like reprints and whatnot. I hope we get Voyeur too. I would love to get Voyeur, dude. That would be so rad if we get Voyeur. Um, but... Yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad we're getting Ichi the Killer. And, yeah, so Fable right here. I've got Volumes 2 and 3 of Fable. I have not read Volume 2 yet. I will eventually read it because I've been watching the anime and absolutely loving the anime. And the anime is, like, a lot further ahead. I'm not really sure how close it is to telling the whole thing. But I think the anime might tell the whole story, if not part of the story. Because I know there's, like, 20... 1 to 23 or something like that volumes of the fable so pretty much this dude right here is like a trained assassin from like literally like childhood or whatever he is a trained assassin and uh he's hit like a body count 
that not that kind of body count <laughs> so he's pretty much killed enough people where like uh he is asked to essentially like shut it down for a while for like a year pretty much don't kill anybody for a year lie low go to the seaside town kind of like an osaka or something like that if i'm not mistaken and just lie low for like a year but he can't lie low because things just keep happening around him that end up making him get involved you know through no not really like his wanting to get involved but like he's kind of put into a position where like he has no choice but to get involved in these things that are going on and it's such a well done story dude it's so much fun like i love him as a character because he, he does like he just sometimes makes like the goofiest faces and these right here are things that he's drawn these are he like he draws these these creatures these uh animals or whatever and it's funny because like at one point in time he says that it took him like all night to draw like that lion or whatever it took him all night to draw it and like the people that he works with you know after he like he assumes this identity you know after going into hiding or whatever for like a year laying low for a year they like make fun of him in a sense but but he's so oblivious to it and yeah regardless of that you know he's just such a fun character dude i love hanging out with him uh, i love like him and his sister yoko it was this this girl right here she's a ton of fun as well she goes out to bars with dudes and gets them drunk and like makes fun of them while they're drunk and she's so much fun like they're both a ton of fun and the side characters as well in the series are all well done it's just i've i've got nothing but praise for the fable so yeah i definitely highly recommend uh checking out the series all right so next up we've got homunculus this is volumes 9 and 10 and this completes homunculus uh this is by seven seas and pretty much homunculus by hideo yamamoto is an outrageous story i did a video about it pretty much you have this dude who gets lobotomized uh they do this thing called trepanation which is an actual thing that uh i guess existed in whatever time period uh, where they drill like a hole like right there in the uh right there in the the center of your forehead and it's supposed to open up some i forgot what the hell it is but pretty much it like it opens up like your sixth sense or whatever and in this world it really does open up this dude's sort of a uh, sixth sense and he can see uh another side of people like he covers his one eye or whatever and he can see like the other this other side of humanity and see inside of people like their true selves or whatever and there's all sorts of crazy things that uh that happen and whatnot within the story and as it goes it gets progressively more and more insane and yeah i don't want to say too much about it because um i feel like it can get pretty easy to to spoil this thing and now that i have the whole set like i really need to to jump into it and, and to try to like knock out the rest of it whether or not you know like i'll knock out more videos about it i don't know but i want to at least read it you know for myself just to complete it because, I mean, like, I have the whole set now, so there's really no excuse, you know, not to jump into it and and complete it and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to know more about it, you can watch the video I did. Or you can go just, like, for the most part, go in uh, relatively blind because it is one of those stories where, like, I, for the most part, went in blind not knowing much other than this panel that I'd seen forever ago, which is, like, what does it mean to be human or whatever with the, the leaf over the dude's face. And that's, like, the only th thing I really knew about homunculus. And yeah, for the most part, I went in blind and absolutely fell in love with it. So if you want to do the same thing, I totally applaud doing that. Uh, at, least, at least pick up the first volume. Don't go full in and pick up all of it. Pick up the first volume. And if you like the first volume, then just go from there. And yeah, definitely. I personally highly recommend it. So it's going to be up to each person, you know. If they want to go this deep, you know, down the, the rabbit hole. You know what I mean? Down the iceberg. <laughs> but it is good. I do definitely personally uh, recommend it. All right, so this is another one of the things that I picked up when I was in Orlando. Unfortunately, I really didn't see too much that I wanted, but I also have like a thousand volumes of manga already. So I'm kind of hit. I've kind of hit a point where like I feel like I have everything that I'm gonna want, but I may start just picking up Inuyasha volumes here and there. So you may start seeing these, you know, in just random hauls. Like I'm not gonna go crazy and pick them all up in one haul, like I did with the next series that I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> But I'm going to pick them up just randomly here or there. I'll pick up a volume of Inuyasha. And this is volume three. Uh, this is by Viz uh, Sunday. Or Viz. These are the Viz big editions of uh, Inuyasha. And there's Best Boy. <laughs> there's Best Boy, Lord Shishomaru. 
Yeah, I love the series, dude. I don't know what to say about it. I don't feel like I need to explain Inuyasha to anybody, so I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I love Inuyasha, dude. It's one of those things where, like, I used to watch the anime when I was, like, 14, 15. Like, used to stay up to, like, when did it come out? Like, 9, 10 o'clock at night? on uh adult swim those of you my age who remember that period could let me know in the comments because i can't remember what time uh inuyasha used to air but i think it was like 9 10 o'clock at night uh or 11 i think maybe like closer to 11 uh, like i used to watch it or like wake up in the middle of the night and the the closer song would be playing which i'm not going to play because copyright issues but the closer song would be playing and i don't know man like just owning it feels really nostalgic for me like like same thing with like over there i've got uh like over there, I've got uh, my my Naruto box set, and little by little, I've been picking up nostalgia things. You know, where like I got Naruto, and I I'm just picking up different things like that that you know were a part of my life at a certain point in time. I kind of wouldn't be surprised if I eventually end up picking up a Bleach box set as well, because that was also a thing that was a part of my my teen years and whatnot. So. Yeah, and this is this is the same thing. I'm little little by little going to be picking up these Inuyasha uh, Amis until I guess I collect them all. But I'm going to take my time with them because like I'm starting to hit a point now where like I feel like I have most of the stuff that I want. I'm sure you've all noticed that like a lot of my hauls recently have been getting smaller and smaller. So I'm going to take my time with Inu Inuyasha and just pick up a volume here or there, and you'll probably just see them randomly uh, through all my hauls. But yeah, man, this is one of those ones that. I do want to collect the whole thing because of what the anime meant to me, you know, growing up and whatnot, and a lot of nostalgia there for me. So, yeah, man, uh, let's move on. All right, so this is one of those things where, like, I can't defend this, but I did it anyway. I just wanted to pick all of it up at one go, so I ended up picking up... So I picked up Volumes 1, and or I picked up the first two Omnis of High Rise Invasion, and I was just like, you know what, why not just pick up the rest of it? So, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> so we got Volumes 5 and 6 here, and then we've got uh, 7, 8 right here, and then we got uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18... <laughs> and then 19 through 21 i could not defend this i'm not gonna sit here and try to defend you know what i did here but i have no regrets about it either i just ended up picking up the whole thing dude i don't know if this is one of those things that like this series is gonna go out of print or not and i just wanted to own all of it because kind of like a nostalgia thing as well you know where like when i was in my mid uh 20s like 10 years ago I talk about this all the time, you know, like where I worked at night and I uh, would uh, read Dorohedoro and I would read uh, Tenku Shinpan or High Rise Invasion. Oh, and by the way, this is by uh, Seven Seas. But when I would read this series, it was called uh, Tenku Shinpan. I don't, it wasn't available in English yet. I think it would become available in English the following year. I think in 2016 is when it became available in English, but I read it in 2015 and it felt like a fever dream to me. I never knew if I was ever going to read it again, if I was ever going to find it again. And then I saw the anime had come out and I was like, I was like, no way, dude, that's Tenku Shinpan. And yeah, it kind of went from there. And then like I ended up picking up volumes, uh, the first two Omnis of Tenku Shinpan. And I talked about them in my I've been reading Death Game manga video, which like I, I think I mentioned in that video felt like a whole, you know, like a one, like I don't know, like a like a whole revolution around the sun or whatever. Like it felt like like going back to that like a whole like a whole revolution i don't know how to describe it like there's a word for it but i just like my brain isn't working right now probably because i've been talking for like almost an hour and a half <laughs> about just everything under the sun but uh but yeah it felt like such a, one of those moments you know where like i used to read this thing you know like 10 years ago and now like 10 years later here i am on youtube they're talking about this thing to like like 1300 uh, subs and whatnot and it's pretty wild man it's one of those moments that like you just don't really don't really think whatever whatever come come to fruition and it's so random dude like who would have thought 10 years ago that I would be sitting here in my mid-30s talking about manga life sometimes just takes you in the most random directions that you just did not ever expect and yeah dude i now have all of <laughs> i now have all of tenku shinpan so hell yeah dude and i have absolutely no regrets Hopefully I don't one day come to regret it. <laughs>
we are going to jump into some Spanish uh, volumes of manga. And this is by Ivria. Ivria, I never know how to pronounce this name. Uh, but right here we've got uh, Mushi Hime, which I think is like Bug Princess or Insect Princess or whatever. And this is a complete set, if I'm not mistaken. There's Volume 2, and then there is Volume 3. This is kind of like just one of those like impulse buy things. Uh, yeah, yeah, Seria de Tres Tomas right there. Uh, three volumes. That's what that means in Spanish. Seria de Tres Tomas, which means it's like available in three volumes or whatever. That's what I like about some of these Spanish volumes is that it'll tell you like how many uh, volumes altogether there will be of the series. And I kind of like don't really know much about this other than the artwork sold me. And I kind of looked at some of the artwork within, you know, the manga. And it looks like it's a pretty wild sort of a story. And I don't know, man, like just seeing those covers really made me want to check it out it really piqued my interest so yeah i don't really know anything about this and hopefully soon i'll be able to you know get into these i want to start talking about more spanish manga and it's kind of tough you know because like i don't like to recommend things to anybody that aren't in english i like to recommend things to people that like you can readily you know go out to the store and pick up in english or you know or read it, you know, like on the Shonen Jump app or like the, the Manga Plus app or whatever. But I like to talk about things that do have like a physical English in some sense or another. Or like digitally in English so that it's something that you can, you know, go out and read. And not, you know, have to go on like a scan site where you might catch a virus or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I just, I want to recommend things to people that like, like that you can read. And I, I kind of like dislike it when certain channels, you know, like will recommend you a thing and then it's not available in English. And it's just like, how the hell am I supposed to read this thing? I got to go look for a scan site that's hosting it to then read it there, you know? And like, I'd rather just recommend you all things that you can physically right now read in English. But I mean, this is a haul video and it being a haul video, I'm going to show you everything that I pick up. And though these aren't Spanish, these are things that I picked up and that I'm going to read. And maybe some of you even read Spanish. And I know there's at least like two or three people that follow these videos that I follow this channel that are, you know, people that read Spanish manga. And, yeah, I mean, so being somebody that, you know, does speak Spanish or whatever, and that does read Spanish, you know, want to pick up more stuff in Spanish. And, like, I'm essentially trying to, like, build a Spanish manga collection. Because now that I have most of the stuff that I want in English, I'm trying to pick up more stuff that isn't in English. And who knows if it's ever, you know, going to get an English release. So, Mushi Hime is up there. So next up, we've got Hideout by Masasumi Kakizaki, and I talked about uh, I talked about his other series earlier, uh, Yomotsu Hegui, The Tree of Death. Uh, this is by Milky Way Ediciones. I haven't started reading this thing yet, but I've seen the artwork, and it looks like it's just going to be an absolutely banana story. <laughs> like I don't know what it's about, which I don't want to know what it's about. But like I said, you know, I've seen I've I've seen a bunch of the artwork and it just looks absolutely insane. And one of the things that I love is, you know, Masasumi Kakizaki absolutely just has one of the best art styles. And I've described him as like the Japanese um Robert Rodriguez, because he looks so much like Robert Rodriguez. And uh Yeah, this dude's artwork is absolutely brilliant. I think he is one of the best artists out. Because he has such a unique style. Like, his style is, like, really grim, really bleak. Like, it looks like a film. Like, it looks cinematic. Like, everything he does just looks so cinematic. And I think that he's doing a thing that I really don't see a lot of other creators doing. Where everybody tries to make their stories look really bright and colorful or whatever. His stories are really dark. Even though they're basically, like, in like you know, black and white and whatnot because it's manga. But his stories are, like, dark. And, like, it's like he's going out of his way to make the shading as dark as humanly possible. And I've heard great things about Hideout. You know, this is like a cult classic for a lot of people. I wouldn't be surprised if this eventually gets an English translation. It definitely deserves one. I mean, it's a single volume, so I don't see any reason why we wouldn't or shouldn't, you know, get it in English. But I got this one in Spanish. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to, to starting this one. I do want to, hopefully soon, just so that I can read it for myself, finally. <laughs> 
All right, so next up we've got Iki Thousand Volume 7. This had an initial English run in English under the title Battle Vixens. I knew it because of the anime that came out forever ago, and I think there was like two seasons of the um, Iki Thousand anime. There's like one more uh, of these remix volumes that are going to be coming out. These are in Spanish. These are by Ivria. Avery, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, so these are remix editions, and I've been picking these up through a Spanish seller or Argentinian, I think. Yeah, I think he's based out of Argentina, and I've been picking them up through there. And uh, yeah, there's just like one more volume of this thing that will complete the whole thing. Who knows if we're ever gonna get Iki Tausen again in English? I don't know how well it's done. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, how much of a demand there is for it, you know what I mean? For there to eventually be a reprint. So I kind of doubt that there's ever going to be a reprint. But being somebody that, you know, like I've said before, you know, like I speak fluent Spanish. And I've, I've read, you know, certain mangas in Spanish. I read Jagan in Spanish. I still need to continue Jagan. I read, like, the first four volumes of that in Spanish. I read the first volume of, um, as I've said, Bestiarius in Spanish. And... It's just cool, man. Like, being bilingual has really opened up, you know, doors for me and allowed me to be able to, like, pick up manga and at least Spanish. And I've been learning Japanese on and off for, like, a really long time. And I suck at it. <laughs> I suck at Japanese, but, I mean, I'm still trying. I, I can't read kanji, like, at all, but I can read, like, hiragana and katakana. But maybe one day, dude, I'll be able to, like, actually, like, you know, read manga in Japanese. That would be pretty rad. And, yeah, there's one more volume of this thing. And... Yeah, I will own the whole set. And I, I really do just over time, I'm in no rush, but just over time, I'd like to just, you know, keep collecting, you know, Spanish manga and eventually just make like a nice full, you know, shelf of nothing but just like Spanish language manga. I think that would be pretty rad. All right. So for the last of my Spanish language manga, we've got, I really meant to take these wrappers off. I should have done that before recording this video, but uh, it was pretty much sent to me in these wrappers. So I got these from a Spanish, from a Mexican seller. I'm sorry. So I got these from a Mexican seller. This is Green Blood. I've talked about this before. This is by Masasumi Kakizaki as well. Uh, this is by Panini Manga. And Panini also has like a, a German... Uh, publisher as well like i guess they release in spanish they release in german i'm not sure what other languages they also release in but uh yeah we've got the whole set right here volumes one uh two volume three right there volume four and volume five i am a fan of westerns i don't know if i've talked about this before on the channel or not but i love westerns i watched a lot of westerns and so um i'm excited about this like and i also like western games you know like um like red dead redemption i played the first one forever ago when it first came out and then uh red dead, red dead redemption 2 i also played and i loved red dead redemption 2 absolutely broke my heart so yeah being a huge fan of westerns and being that it is Masasumi Kakizaki. I have nothing but the utmost uh, feeling that this is going to be an absolutely wild story start to finish. So I love the artwork. So yeah, I'm looking forward to wherever the hell this journey is going to go as well. All right. So by a master of manga, one of the most celebrated creators ever, I've been working on a video about this dude. I've been writing a script and right now it's pretty much just like in the script writing stages but i am going to be doing a huge video about junji ito and like i said right now it's still pretty much just script but i will eventually start recording i don't anything about this story but it being junji ito i am super excited about it and for the most part yeah like i want to go in blind because i'm going to be doing the same thing for a lot of the stuff of his that like i haven't read yet it's going to go in blind and just kind of like you know, formulate my opinions on it and then talk about it, you know, in the video, which unfortunately I wanted to drop it in October of this year, but there's no way that's going to happen. Th there's just way too much stuff that I got to talk about. And I've barely read like one of the series and I started writing my thoughts on the other one and 
there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. And to, for it to be the best video that I can get out, I have to go through every single thing and write my thoughts as I go through every single thing. So it's probably not going to drop until like next year, but it is a project that I'm taking extremely seriously. And that when I drop it, it's going to be the best thing that I can, you know, that I can put out. So please stay tuned for that. Probably sometime next year, maybe mid next year, but it is officially in the works because i have been actually working on it and not just saying that i'm gonna work on it you know what i mean it is actively as of right now being you know worked on so yeah please uh stick around all right so last of this haul is something that i'm super uh excited to own and that is at the mountains of madness the deluxe edition that contains the two i guess uh uh, volumes or whatever that existed for at the mountains of madness by hp lovecraft as drawn by gold tanabe and this is by dark horse and i love this edition it is absolutely beautiful dude i can't wait to crack it open i haven't cracked it open yet but i will be opening it because i'm going to be doing a video for halloween about this manga i was actually going to do it a lot sooner i was going to actually drop it before my uh last video that i dropped but I wanted to save it so that I could talk about it, you know, for Halloween. I feel like it makes a lot more sense to just chill and drop it then. And that gives me time to kind of like really, you know, spend some time with it and not like rush to to read it, to get a video out about it. Because that's what I was going to do initially. And I feel like the way that I'm going to be doing it now makes a lot more sense. And yeah, I'm really excited to start this thing. I've never read At the Mountains of Madness, never read the H.P. Lovecraft story. But I'm excited about reading this one. I actually picked up a collection of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft stories that has At the Mountains of Madness in it. So I'm thinking about reading that at the same time. You know, or reading that at some point and then reading uh, At the Mountains of Madness. If I can get both of them done, you know, before, you know, I plan on dropping this video. Just to have, like, an idea of each one. You know, the translation I mean, the, uh, the the translated work, you know, into manga and the original story by H.P. Lovecraft. Because I have a bunch of his stuff now. Like, I've got um, Shadow Over Innsmouth, and then I got this story collection one from him. And then I've got Call of the Cthulhu uh, pre-ordered, and I'm not really sure when exactly that's going to drop. But, yeah, I want to collect all of these things by Goltanabe. I feel like he's doing a great job with all of this, and super excited to see. <laughs> yeah, super excited to see, you know what he's gonna what else he's gonna adapt you know in the future and yeah with that we close this whole video out if you own this hardcover i'd love to know what you think of it or if you've read the the uh the just the the story collected within the at the mountains of madness or if you've even read you know hp lovecraft's at the mountain of, out at the mountains of madness i'd love to know what you think and that is it for me if you enjoyed this video please sub to the channel or drop me a like uh, drop a comment. If you want to see more of me, if you want to support this channel in another way, you can do so by heading over to the Patreon and becoming a member. It is $2 a month to become a patron. And I have all sorts of like behind the scenes stuff that I post there. I post scripts, I post pictures and whatnot. Uh, I do videos and all sorts of other things. And I want to start doing polls or whatever for people that want to, you know, join the Patreon and things to sort of liven it up a bit. And you know, uh, let people vote on, you know, whatever video may be coming up next, because I do have a lot of stuff that I want to do in the future, so that's something that I think would be cool to sort of, uh, to sort of do there. You don't have to join it, there's no obligations, you know, you're still going to get the same content, regardless if you join the Patreon or not, but it's just something that I created just for anybody that maybe wants to, you know, uh, support what I do here, and you can also drop me a super thanks. You do not have to if you don't want to, but it does mean the absolute world to me. That's all I got for you. I hope that you enjoyed our time together. I know this video got extremely long. Didn't mean for it to get as long as it did, but that seems to always be the case. Every time I drop a haul video, it ends up being way longer than it needs to be. But yeah, ultimately, that's all I've got for you. I hope that you have enjoyed our time together as much as I have. I always love spending time with you all. It's probably going to be a lot less going forward because I have so much, you know, going on. But I will continue as long as I can, you know, to drop videos on this channel. And yeah, I hope that you're all doing well. I hope everyone you love is doing well. Please take care of yourselves until next time that we meet.